Okay, welcome back to the Scope Podcast. My boys in the house and my girl, I suppose. <laughs> uh, where this will be focusing around Indigenous Round, which, which these two guys have done a lot of work for. Obviously, uh, first introducing Connor. Connor's obviously a big part of the family here, I'd say. We've, we've, uh, he's come on and done Footy Companion before, as well as him and KP coming on and kicking off my interviews with all the teams, which has been a giggle and, and worked out well for us. Thanks for coming in again, Brad. It's nice to be on with you, Ank. It's good. Good and, to see you. And Marley, uh, Marley, we haven't done a podcast yet, but uh, you and the girls from Chicks and Balls podcast are going to come on and do Women's Round for Footy Companion with us. Yeah, I can't wait for that. So They're going good, eh? Uh, the girls are going good. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, they're a giggle. Lukey got me on only a couple of weeks ago before we're coming up. Um, we've been watching a few of your, your little snippet videos, so um, the girls do well. I really uh, appreciate it. How, how have you pulled up after Magic Round? Was a, it was a good weekend, wasn't it? Yeah, I needed a big rest, but yeah. my, my resilience on the drink is not very good. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting too old for it, so I'm, I'm still... You're getting old too old for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, old, old for it, eh, hey, <laughs> He's, even Connor, Connor said it on his uh, chat and, you know, things are going really well for me. You had a good look in the mirror after I heard you talk about, uh, you know, potentially looking down the road and being Unky Scope <laughs> and Unky Normie. So, um, oh. bit, mate, you changed my life, brother. Some yeah. deep thoughts on the way back from our Byron trip, mate. Yeah. And, yeah. But uh, you're happy now. It's good to see. Killing and it. you got a job. Job. Like a... Yeah, so cool, since, all, since, since all that stuff, we'll, we'll obviously get into our gratefuls after this. I think that's a big part of which ch- sort of changed my momentum and... And things have been going really well for me. But, yeah, Mrs. Now, I've got a, a job here at YKTR on the books. Um, you know, me and you even had chats maybe like a couple of weeks after about like sort of what my goals are or while we're in Byron about, you know, what the plan is for the, uh, for the podcast and just being more consistent. Mm. It's something that I've lived up. I've noticed that something that you've obviously lived up to doing weekly for 257. So you boys are killing it as well. So thank you. Everything's yeah. going well for us, eh? No, nah, it's been good, mate. It's funny what happens when you, you're grateful, eh? So what you grateful for today then, brother? <laughs> okay, uh... I'm going to go, my grateful for today is Marley, actually. Oh, so, okay. yeah, uh, she's come on board with the association in the last sort of two years, but now she's come on in a formal sense too. So, um, yeah, just her really driving the, the charity and, and what we're about. And hopefully um, together we can make some real positive change for Indigenous youth here in Australia. That's unreal. Oh, thank you. Um, I think even KP said it. There's nothing better than being part of someone's gratefuls, especially yes. when you're sitting around the table. So, Marley, yeah, that I'm, must be good. That must warms be really, my really heart, good. Warms my yeah. heart. So, what's your grateful for today? Well, I, I, I just feel really grateful for, for this, like being surrounded by people who are passionate about being positive and about like living that grateful life. That, to me, is something that I've been trying to foster in my life for a couple of years, like yeah. you become the people you spend the most time with. So I feel really grateful to be in this space. And it feels nice, doesn't it? Like oh, it's so sort of, people thought I was taking the piss out of it. I, I think it genuinely, like at the start, but it's something that you just, if you keep doing, like you keep feeling that positive energy, mm. it just flows into everything in life. And, and when things start, when you start ticking, ticking the boxes and things start coming off of you, you start thinking, fuck, there's something it's to actually this. actually works, though. yeah. Yeah, because it started off as a bit of a piss take for us too. Yeah. Like we just did it when we are in lockdown and we are just like, we're sitting at home all day. So we started thinking, you know, like what are we grateful for? And then once you start to do it more and more, then you just start, you start to appreciate everything. Yeah. The little things that you probably just take for granted, you don't. And yeah, it's, it's a cool perspective to have. For sure, brother. My grateful as well is getting the uh, – you gave me the early code to get in for the, the <laughs> latest drop. That's my grateful. It arrived today, brother. I got. A, I actually got a message that it arrived in the post today. I've seen some pictures coming up. So I'm grateful you gave me that code because it sold out straight away. And obviously, you know, doing really well with that side of it as well. Before we get in the Indigenous stuff, um, how the last couple of shirts uh, was like 15 minutes. It was, they were all gone as well. Oh, sorry. <coughs> um, I did the Kalen. He does that in the mic every yeah. time we do a podcast. The yeah. cough, but um, yeah, we actually sold out the last one in like two minutes forty. So two minutes. Yeah. Oh, the know. first one was three minutes, two minutes forty. Um, yeah, it's crazy. We didn't expect it to to go like that. To be honest, when we did the first drop, Kalen and I had a discussion for it, and we're like, if it doesn't sell out by tonight, do we just put up a sold out graphic just to pretend like it did? <laughs> yeah, we'll so we'll just take the loss. Yeah, yeah, there's no um, way you need that. Yeah, and then it actually did. So yeah, we're really. Um, pumped with just how it's going and like you said before i think the consistency of doing it every week is yeah. is starting to pay off for us and it's been good to have your boy and our boy croaks on board as well oh, he's right. a cracker so yeah yeah big shout out to croaks he's um 
just the getting in. He's he's a bit of a punching bag as well, so <laughs> that sort of vibe works. But he, he controls it really nicely yeah, too, does. doesn't he? He's that's messaged me. We we bounced back and forth a couple of times he's on ideas, told me. and he's told and me. then he gave me the green light to use the because um, we you know obviously taking the gratefuls from our trip in Byron, and then uh, we did some songs and like because we seen you guys vibing out mm. and and Mud normally put you on it on, on his billy yeah I'm off him for that yeah for, for your song choice so we thought. You know, we'll use it for one episode. And Croaks goes, no, no, don't worry. You can have it for use another it, episode as well. It. So shout out to Croaks. It's cool, man. Um, doing big things at 257. Um, uh, full support. And, and we'll try to get on in a couple of weeks as well. Yeah, I'd love that. Okay, so on to uh, Indigenous Round. Um, we'll start off with the charity that you've, you've started, the Culture Choice Association. Mm-hmm. Do you want to tell us how that come about and, um, you know, sort of what you're doing in the community and within the game? Yeah, sweet. Just jump in whenever you feel. Yeah, we'll um, talk about your role after Mali and like how you've been introduced as well. Yeah, right. sweet. So um, I'm a Gamilaroi man. My family's from out Walgut Way. I was born in Dubbo um, <coughs> and then moved to the Central Coast when I, when I was young. And um, I was lucky enough to go down to boarding school for year 11 and 12. And um, sort of from that, that opportunity, uh, me, mum and dad had always spoke about, you know, if we were in a position where we we're fortunate enough that we would start uh, a charity to be able to give back to the Indigenous community in some way. And um, in 2017, when I was at the Roosters, uh, unfortunately, my little cousin Parker, he took his life. So he was only um, a teenager at the time. And it was something that hit home. It was pretty crazy. Like, just wasn't expecting it. When I got the call, I was just in shock. And um, it's something that sort of really broke our family. And um, you know, we we still haven't recovered from it. I know my my auntie; she's a stu- super strong woman, and we've actually been lucky enough to bring on board with the charity this year. So she's working for it, which is okay. which is pretty cool. But so it took her a while to get to get used to it and come to grips with it all, and then get involved. Yeah, well, we just didn't really. It wasn't sort of in a place where we could, yeah. um, I fair. guess, bring her on. And um, this year, I guess, it's expanded so much. And basically, after it happened. Uh, sort of researching and having a look at indigenous youth um, and the suicide rates and um, it's just alarming statistics it's the the biggest killer for indigenous kids from the age of 15 to 17 so wow. to put that in perspective it's actually five to 17 oh sorry so five from to the age of five wow. to 17 yeah yeah yeah. And so, so you, you've obviously got involved, Marley, uh, like Connor said at the top of the show, for the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, how did you uh, How did you come uh, come to get involved? Yeah. And um, and how's it been in the last couple of years, sort of in your role? Yeah. So I'm I'm a proud Gamilaroi woman too, with connection to Dunkardy country, and I've worked in um, the space with Aboriginal communities my whole career. Basically, um, similar story to Connor growing up in the Sutherland Shire, a place where you don't meet a lot of blackfellas, but yeah. um, you're given a lot of opportunities and I'm very privileged to have grown up um, in the household that I did and I just always knew I wanted to, to give back. It's a bit funny how I actually came to connect with Connor around mm. cultural choice. We're in a nightclub um, <laughs> at the All Stars <laughs> hey, last that's year. Where, that's yeah. where all the best meetings happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I kind of cornered Connor because we kind of like, you know, knew of each other and yep. I'd known about Boots for Brighter Futures, which is this campaign that we do around Indigenous Round and sort of said I want in and um, it's looking great but you don't have enough girls who are part of the kind of group of kids who like are yeah, artists. Yep. So obviously yep. I have a big mm. um, focus on having girls in the space. So yep. um, yeah, sort of mentioned that to him and then um, promised him I'd message him the next day and he was like, I can't re- believe you actually remembered <laughs> that <laughs> conversation. Um, but yeah, so from that point uh, last year it was it was a bit mad because of COVID and then we weren't sure that an Indigenous round was actually going to happen. And then when it was going to, it was a very, very quick turnaround. Like like, a lot of things last year. Everything would have been so last minute and then you've got to fucking get everything together. Absolutely. And so it was pretty chaotic and we were able to help with actually getting enough artists. So these are the young people who I guess we'll get into when we talk about what Boots for Brighter Future is um, to be involved. And we, I was just lucky enough to be able to use some of my networks to pull some kids in and and got involved that way. And then this year, yeah, it was a little bit more formalised and now I'm on the board. um, So Connor really can't get rid of me. Um, (laughs) Marley's one of those people that when you need something or you need a number, (laughs) like you need need someone in a certain space, you just ring her and just go, Marley, do you have this person's number? (laughs) She'll go and get it, bro. Yeah, (laughs) good. Love that. Go get it. So the Boots for Brighter Futures. Futures. um, That's... 
is that obviously to do with designs for the boots and the jerseys that are potentially going to be raising money for your for the foundation? Yeah, so it's to do with uh, so it's based around Indigenous Round. Uh, we get all players sort of so we're working with six clubs this year. So we've got the the Knights on board, the Roosters on board, Tigers, Bull- Raiders. Bulldogs, Bulldogs and Storm. And Storm. So yep. we've got players from all those teams who were very fortunate to be able to get those guys to donate some boots to us. Then we've partnered with different youth organisations. So um, there's guys in Newcastle called the Kirinari Hostel who are doing it for the third year. We've got the Glen um, who have been on board before. So that's a, a rehabilitation centre on the Central Coast. And then all of the... The tensional centres, so the juvenile justice centres. So yep. we've got artists in all, all of the juvies. And, yeah, basically they get the boot. They uh, do some basi- uh, Indigenous so art. So the boys send them a, a fresh pair of boots. Yep. And then... Yep, they do some Indigenous art. And then with that, it's kind of like to tell their story, tell the player's story that they're painting, and then um, they give them back and the boys playing them in, in Indigenous round. And there's a big focus on having non-Indigenous players do it too. Um, which I think is really cool because it actually started from a conversation I had with Aidan Guerra, who's um, not a, not Aboriginal or not Torres Strait Islander, and he wanted my dad to paint paint a pair of boots for him to wear an Indigenous round, which I thought That's was so really cool, cool. So yeah, yeah, and then all those boots that are painted, they go um, they go up for auction, and then the money raised goes back into the uh, association, so we can keep doing programs like this, and then also some of the artists um, will get paid as well. It's uh, with the guys at the the juvies, you're not actually allowed to pay them. So yeah. what we do with those guys is like uh, I went out to the one in Dubbo a while ago and just had like the Knights donated a heap of gear, which was sick. So yeah, when gross. they get out, they got like a bunch of Knights gear to come out to. And then we were in Baxter the other day and like dropped a pair. Uh, Nike donated like heaps of boots too. Yeah. So we were able to give the artists a pair of boots to come out. So when they get out of um, juvie, they've got a fresh pair of boots to go and run around Bro, if they want to play footy. There's a bit, a bit of talent in there yeah. too. The boys, can, the boys can mix it with the best. A couple of the boys were like, I'm just hanging up on my wall though. Like yeah. I'm not – they're too fresh. Like I yeah. never want to wear yeah. them, which yeah. was really beautiful. But yeah, that's unreal. Yeah. That would mean a lot to them. And, and touching on the stuff with Aiden Guerra, I, in 2014 or 15 for Indigenous Round, his Stevie Maddow's missus, she's – uh, Aboriginal from up Byron Way. I, know, I don't know exactly where she's from, but she designed our jerseys. And, and that was just cool That's for cool. us to wear, just like, you know, obviously being Kiwi. Stevie Maddow is obviously Samoan, but uh, it meant a lot to him, you know, with regards to what you're talking about with Aiden. It doesn't necessarily have to be the Aboriginal boys to get involved. Like, it meant a lot to Skivvy that yep. round just because he was rep- representing on behalf of his, 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 his family and whatnot. Yeah, that's cool. I think it's um, really important, like, as a step forward that everyone's buying into it and that's what we're sort of focused on. So that's why we're trying to get players from different clubs and Indigenous and non-Indigenous guys and um, really show that this is something that they're passionate about. Yeah. It's something that, um, you know, yeah. as small step as it is donating a pair of boots and wearing them, um, it can actually create real change, which we're starting to see. So Yeah, absolutely. I think the thing that really has blown me away consistently is how much it means to the young people involved. Mm-hmm. Um just the way that it empowers them to kind of believe that their own story is something worth telling, like especially when we were in Baxter, which is a um, juvenile detention centre on the Central Coast the other week, one of the young men in particular like really went out of his way to kind of thank us for the opportunity and um, how he'd never done art before but now he thinks he wants to be an artist and all this kind of stuff. Some of those kids are just looking for a bit of direction. Exactly. 100%. And Mm. someone to believe in them and to say we actually care and it's – yeah, it's, it's really special and I think that um, you're 100% right in talking about getting a lot of non-Indigenous people to think about it. I think that this round shouldn't be mistaken as something just for blackfellas. Like it's about celebrating what we've contributed to the game through its history and what we continue to, but it's also the fact that every single club's based on Aboriginal land. Everywhere yep. you are in Australia is Aboriginal land and that's something for all of us to celebrate. It's part of all of our stories as Australians. Yep. So, yeah, that's what I just about. think in general in the last couple of years, I think the attention to – the cause and, and, you know, what the Indigenous people, you know, obviously being um, the, the first people of these land, like it's starting it's starting to get more recognition. I, back, I know in the past some some players have probably, it had, it had been looked at as a negative way, but I feel like everyone in the NRL is buying in now, especially at the start of the year, Connor, when they do that Indigenous uh, Maldives All-Star game now. Mm. That's, for me, that's one of the better games of the year and it, kick, it kicks it off so well. You must have been disappointed to miss, on, miss out on that at the start of the year. I know you and KP, when I talked to you up in Byron with, with Filthy, that you're probably going to miss that game. 
Yeah, yeah, it's a bummer to miss out on it. I sort of was like a week late, um, so yeah. it was just a week early for me to be able to play, but it's a cracker week. Like, that's where we met after the after the oh, okay. London Gold Coast last year. Yeah. So, yeah, it's um, just a great opportunity to bring community together and um, showcase more of our culture again. Yeah, like you said, I feel like it's uh, – we're getting better at um, you know you know really embracing it, but I still feel like as a game and as a community and the conversations um, got to keep going. Yeah, we need to we need to keep going. There's still more steps to take in the right direction. So yeah, it's and it would be nice to going in the right direction. You said you've got six teams. Ideally, it would be nice to have all sixteen next year. Is that is that sort of like a goal for you guys? Or yeah, I think and probably more important than having all of those teams is having each of the players who are involved really understand what it's about. I yep. think that that's been a bit of a hurdle this year, I think maybe because the Knights boys know Connor's story and they have that real kind of emotional connection to it. Yep. I, I think next year I'd really like to see more of the boys have an opportunity to meet the artists, to get in the space. And, yeah, that'd be awesome. You know, obviously with COVID and all that kind of stuff, it's been hard, but that's, that's what I want. I, I think you know, when you're in there, like when we were at Baxter the other day, like, I don't know, I haven't told you this, Connor, but like I cried all the way home, like driving <laughs> because just what it means and, and the genuine change that can happen there. I want everyone to be able to feel that because that's how you buy into it for a long time and we need, yeah. you know, sustainable kind yeah. of passion for it. Yeah, for sure. And you're obviously speaking with a lot of passion about it now. There's, you've also involved in the ID Know Yourself yeah. Foundation. I've seen that you're a board member of that. Yes. Uh, is that sort of meshed into the same sort of thing? Is that a separate thing? And how's that all working for this round as well? Yeah, obviously with I have so much spare time. I'm just on millions of yeah. boards and things. Um, <laughs> I didn't know yourself. So <laughs> I, I appreciate you being on this board for us today. It means a lot. No, I don't know about that. But ID Know Yourself, um, actually we had the ID Know Yourself kids who are involved in that program paint some boots last year which is great yep. uh it is a charity that was started by a good friend of mine his name's Isaiah Dore and he grew up in the foster care system and um he just wanted once he got out of it he realized that there's not a lot of support for Aboriginal kids who are in care so he started this incredible um charity that looks after basically provides a family for kids who don't live with their family um yep. in and around the Sydney area and you know it's really intertwined with those sort of issues that we address with Cultural Choice Association as well because when you have that loss of identity and that disconnect from culture, you have mental health problems and, mm -hmm. and you know, end up locked up and, and things like that. That's They're all intertwined with each other. So it's about addressing those kind of things. And, um, yeah, it's I, I love my my two little boards that I'm on and, <laughs> yeah. and get to help with I need to get on a few things. boards, actually. <laughs> it motivated me to get on a couple of boards. <laughs> Um, I've seen, obviously, like at the top of the show, we talked about you being from Chicks and Balls podcast. I've seen that your dad got involved with the Bulldog side of it. Yeah. Was he involved with the designs? And I've seen that he was obviously super proud because there was, probably wasn't stuff like this back in the day when, yeah. when he was playing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was really humbling for Dad to get the phone call earlier this year that the Bulldogs wanted to kind of dedicate their design on their Indigenous jersey. So Marley's story. dad's Rod Silver too, yes. did I, did yep. I say that? Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, Rod Silver, Rod Rocket Silver. Rod, the grouse. <laughs> He's a grouse. He's hey. a grouse. <laughs> Um, what about when she's at? Sorry, just a, <laughs> before you get on, she's at the airport, and then we'll, she was talking. Uh, she, we'll talking to her briefly because, like I said, Lukey introduced us, and then she's like, "Oh yeah, my dad played for the Bulldogs and the Roosters," and we could, sort of just didn't think anything of it because, like, she didn't like na name drop him yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah. And then and I go, "Oh yeah." So then, and then a little bit later, I go, "Like, oh, who's your dad anyway?" And she goes, "Rod Silver." I go. Oh, hey, <laughs> it's a fucking gun. <laughs> she sort of just played it down yeah. like it was some like, part time first grade. Played a couple so. games here and there. Uh, yeah. You know why, but because like my yeah. whole life I've been trying to get out from underneath the shadow <laughs> yeah, of yeah. my dad, right? I've always been Rocket's daughter, which I'm very proud of, yeah. but you know, trying to make it my own name. I think you're doing all right for yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, now you're on a couple of boards, you might have surpassed him. Published author, too. Yes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so it was really nice for dad to get that call and he was kind of a bit taken aback and he's like, are you sure you want this to be about me kind of thing? And, um, we went in and, and spoke with the, with the dogs cause I'm basically my family's PR manager. Um, and we, the artist who did it, it Cleveland McGee, he's actually someone that oh, we've, yeah. yeah. Do you know Cleveland? I, play, I played footy with him when I was oh, young. Yeah. yeah dad a coached him. Years ago yeah. Too, yeah. Yeah. So we've he's known Cleve guy. since he was 16 and dad coached him in the, um, Indigenous New South Wales side under 60s. They used to play yeah. in front before yeah. the All-Stars. Yeah. Um, so he was able to like come back in and, and share this story of dad and, and paint his totem. Our totem is a um, Yurundali, which is a tree goanna. Yep. And um, 
he features that in the in the artwork and uh, dad finally got to wear it the, the other day and, and I could just see him like beaming and he always talks about the fact that it makes him so proud when he watches things like the All-Stars or the Indige Round and yeah. how, um, you know, there were so many incredible – there's always been so many incredible blackfellas who play um, to see them celebrated and, you know, not have that shame or that fear to be like I'm black and I'm proud mm. kind of thing. Yeah. So um, I'm so, so stoked for him that he's able to – to be a part of it in this way and um yeah it, it's it's pretty special it's pretty cool yeah my because obviously my dad played as well and he's been involved with the new zealand multi teams and the aboriginal the setup of that all-star he manages the the new zealand multi team and, and just being a part of it and, and being with all the boys like they're, no. they're always a little bit standoffish at first because they just sort of think like oh no nah, it's I've, I've had my time but once they get around the boys like he it may, he, he talks about it for for weeks on end yeah. so i think that's the sort of best part of like those things is having all the old boys in there. I remember we had, like, Matty Bowen and Justin Hodges and Yeah, you had the mad camp last so year, didn't good, you? Bro. We were playing, um, I don't know, like, you know the dropout game? Yeah. It's basically like a conditioning game, and Matty was in our team. It was 4 all last play, drop kick to him. Yeah. Bro, he got the ball, dummy went through and, like, won <laughs> the yeah, game. The <laughs> Is that when you, like, you start off with nine, pl- six players or something, and yeah. you drop down to, like, five, four, three, three. tools yeah. and one-on-one? Yeah, yeah, that game. and He's made for that game. Ah, oh, he's the king, bro. I just, <laughs> oh, it was like, I was starstruck, man, starstruck. Yeah, all right. Well, uh, just, to, just to wrap it up, so now where can, where can people find you? Where can people donate? How can we buy these jerseys? How can we buy these, these boots that you've got going on for the weekend? Yeah, so um, after Thursday, the auction will start. Yep. And um, it's www.culturechoice.com.au. Absolutely wrong. Is that wrong? wrong? Yeah, that's all right. Okay, you go, you go. <laughs> it's just ccai.org.au <laughs> forward slash auctions. You are wow. absolutely yeah. wrong. Wow. <laughs> I'll put the link on Instagram. Right, and then you can look at it too much, yeah? Yeah, if you go to um, at Cultural Choice Association on Instagram, yeah. all the details are there. Be there. Um, and then so let's get that again one more time so it's completely right so everyone's watching. At Cultural For Choice. For Connor's sake, not yeah. your sake. At Cultural Choice Association, all one word, on Instagram. Yep. All the details will be there. The website itself is just ccai.org.au forward slash auctions. Link, link in bio. Link in bio. Is that all right? Yeah. Abraham swipe Lincoln. up, swipe up. <laughs> Link and buy. Well, um, wow. it's such a great cause. Thanks for th- oh, Brad. Thanks for coming back, Molly. Thanks Appreciate for coming you, in. Um, keep supporting each other. Love what you guys are doing, and um, congrats on. Uh, <laughs> I'm just laughing at myself. Like, I was so confident. <laughs> like, yeah, WWE culture. I thought shows. I was, I and she's like, like, Nah, that's yeah. wrong. Like, you got you got me wigging out. I come. What did I just? I was just I was talking about the collabs and all that, and he starts laughing. Uh, but thanks for coming in, guys. Appreciate it, and uh, all the best with the weekend. Uh, thank, thank you, you man. so much.